you're gonna say I saw the super t-shirt. Yeah, well, it has two clutching hands on it. <laughs> well, all it says is feel free. <laughs> but, Mom, all my friends have dirty t-shirts. Morning, sweetheart. Good morning, Dad. Would you want me to have the only chest in school that nobody stares at? Absolutely. <laughs> Who are you talking to, Ruthie? Hold on, Mom. You called long distance to discuss a little thing like your chest? <laughs> Don't you kids know how much it costs to call Guatemala from Portland? But Mom's home now in Los Angeles. And tomorrow the travel agency is sending her to Hawaii. Honey, listen, your mother and I are separated. Now, you can't keep calling her every time something comes up. Mom, Dad wants me to hang up on you. I do not. Well, you just said give me the phone. Me just give me the phone. Give me the phone. Give me the... Hi, Marion. <laughs> no, no, no. Everything's fine. No, the job's going great. Cooking's no problem. I'm a little iffy when it comes to the laundry. Uh, well, yesterday, I, instead of putting in uh, two cups of soap, I put in two cups of starch. Marion, nobody ever died from stiff shorts. Yeah, I sent you the check yesterday. Marion, Marion, I've got, I've got to get to work. Look, I'll call you later, and we can fight when the rates are lower. All right, goodbye. Sweetheart, listen, you've got to face the fact that your mom and I have split up. Now, if you've got a problem, just come to me. You know I'll understand. Okay. It's just that I wanted to buy this really funny T-shirt with these two clutching hands on it. You mean the one that says, feel free? No way. <laughs> we were listening. Honey, after four weeks of motherhood, I am learning. <laughs> Daddy. No dirty t-shirts. <laughs> Ruthie, don't you know how to handle Dad? Ask for a string bikini, then settle for a dirty t-shirt. I know, that's what I'm after, the string bikini. No way! <laughs> he's even beginning to hear like Mom. I hope he's not in too bad a mood. I want to ask him something important. What? It's private. Oh, did Dad start your underwear too? <laughs> I wish Mom was here. She'd understand. Oh, the big S-E-X, huh? <laughs> just forget it. Look, Diane, just because you're 16, don't treat me like a little sister. I know about sex. But being tied to Freddie Jackson in a three-legged race is not sex. <laughs> well, don't tell Freddie that. He thinks we're engaged. <laughs> I wish I could talk to Mom. Why is it so hard to talk to men about sex? Probably because they don't think about it as much as we do. <laughs> you know, you can talk to Dad. He talks to women all day long on his radio show. He's very understanding. Well, he's not their father. See, I've been going out with this guy. Hank, how did you know? Well, you kept moaning it in your sleep last night. <laughs> Hank, Hank, oh, Hank. For a minute, I thought you were going critical. <laughs> very funny. See, Hank and I have a special date tonight, and he wants me to, well, to wear a dress. <laughs> no. He wants to go all the way. Oh. <laughs> all the way where? Hey, kids, um, I got to leave early today. Oh, that all the way. <laughs> Our uh, nervous Nelly lady producer wants me to have some publicity shots. Hey, uh, listen, uh, which is my sexy side? <laughs> okay, so I don't have a sexy side. I don't need one for a radio show anyway. What I do need is another $200 a month and a new lint trap for that dryer so we don't get fuzzballed to death. <laughs> I still haven't come up with a question for the day. Diane, has a question for the day. Hey, if I use it on my show, I'll give you a dollar. Dad, this one is worth at least ten. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Daddy, I do have something to talk to you about. Okay, honey, but uh, make it quick, really, because I'm really rushed. Okay. It's... It's nothing. Uh, uh, hey, listen, guys. Uh, it's not easy being both the mom and the dad. But uh, you, I promise you, there, there's no problem that this family can't straighten out. Except starch panties. <laughs> it's good for your posture. <laughs> now, uh, what, what's troubling you, honey? Well, Daddy, it's like this. There, there are certain feelings that you have, like certain impulses, and... and well, I can't spell it out. S-E-X. <laughs> Uh, Diane, um, you are getting to the age where there are certain, uh, biological and, uh, chemical changes taking place in your body. <laughs> you don't know what they are. Uh, I don't know what they are. Nobody knows what they are. Hank knows. Who? Hank is the boy I've been going out with. All right. Hank, the boy. <clears throat> All right. Well, let me just say this. Um, you're a young girl, and Hank is a young man. And, uh, well, there are differences between the two of you. Okay? Well, even Freddie Jackson knows that much. <laughs> Daddy, that's not what I meant. Right. Look, um, you're a very healthy young girl, and, and I've come to accept the fact that the day will come when you're going to start to... You're going to want to... Did you cut your hair? Dad! Okay, uh, the time will come when you're going to start to... Uh, you're going to want to... Uh, <clears throat> you're you're going to start getting all... Uh, oh, crime and Nedley, don't they show you movies about this stuff in school? <laughs> I mean, we had them. I remember uh, David Niven was the voice of the little bee that flew from flower to flower. Now our movies are about frogs and fish. Yeah, and Hank is ready to swim upstream. <laughs> uh, look, I, look, I gotta go, I'm late. Uh, but honey, don't worry about anything. I mean, uh, when you're ready, you'll know Mother Nature works very gradually. That's it? Believe me, honey, when the time comes, that first kiss... First kiss, Daddy! I mean the first real kiss. You know, when you feel... When he's... Mm. <laughs> Look, um, I, I, I've got to go. Uh, we'll talk later. <coughs> Goodbye. Bye, Dad. Uh, see you. Take line three. Hi, you're on the air with Wonderful Air. Hey, uh, hi, Larry. Uh, this is Dave from uh, Portland Heights. Well, hi, Dave. What do you want to talk about? Oh, them Arabs. You know anything about them, huh? Uh, well, yeah, there was a guy in my fraternity who was from uh, Saudi Arabia. Very popular. Every Tuesday, he used to uh, give his old car away. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that's what bugs me. I mean, what do you think about them buying up our country, huh? Well, I'll tell you, Dave, if they want to uh, pay me three times what my house is worth, they got a deal. Yeah, well, listen, wise guy, my house is on the market, but when I sell, I'm selling to an American. I mean, we got to stick together, you know? Hey, uh, listen, Dave, a friend of mine is looking for a house. What are you asking? Uh, I don't know, uh, 40000 Uh, He's a lawyer. 50000 And he's black. With the improvements, sixty-one five. <laughs> You're an inspiration, Dave. Call me back when I'm not here. This is Larry Alder. We'll be back after four minutes of news and our usual forecast of rain. <laughs> Newsroom's got it. See you tomorrow. Oh, wait a minute. You can't leave. We don't have an engineer. By golly, you're right. <laughs> Bye. I don't believe this. Where is Earl? I wrote him a seven-page memo to be here ten minutes before his shift. He's probably still home reading the memo. <laughs> Why do I have to put up with this? I'm the producer. That should mean something. Means a lot when your uncle owns the station. 
that's just a rumor I started to get a parking place. Oh. Listen, Larry, I want to tell you your show is great. Sensitive, witty, imaginative. Thank you. But it needs goosing up. Does your mother know you talk like that? I haven't even told her I wear a padded bra. Listen, Larry, you got to make this show more controversial. Nice is nowhere. Morgan, this is my show, and I like it the way it is. I mean, there's enough hassle going on today. Most people just want a friendly ear, okay? But this show could be so much more. Now, personally, I think you're kind of dull. But on the air, you have charm, a real flair, a way that turns women on. Use it. Larry, I just want this show to be more exciting for your sake. What do you mean, dull? Look, Larry, if this show makes it, I could... I mean, you could get to Hollywood. I just moved from Hollywood. Let's go back. I don't want to go back. I moved to Portland because I like it here and it's better for my daughters. Who cares? I want to be rich. <laughs> oh, Lord, if it rains one more day here, I'm going to mildew. Where is that damn engineer? Damn engineer? Does your mother know you talk like that? She doesn't even know about the padded bra. Really? I thought everyone knew. Hiya, Larry. Hi, Earl. Earl, where have you been? Listen, why don't you two drive to work together? You live in the same building. Yeah, we could form a carpool. I am a carpool. All right, Earl, get ready. We've got 38 seconds. Lay off the chocolates, kid. You'll get fat. Is it true you can't tip over? <laughs> Listen, the last producer we had loved a little Pat now and again. Remember him? <laughs> All right. Earl, if we don't start on time today, I'm going to report you to the union. Here's their number. <laughs> Ask for me. I'm the chairman of the grievance committee. <laughs> get in the booth wagons ho oh. and sex it up how'd you like to come up to my place sometime and look for my union label wow i've never been invited to a hangar before earl three seconds what is the big rush you touch that button and i'm calling a strike <laughs> Welcome to the second hour of Hello, Larry. Uh, let's hear what's on your mind, Portland. Line two. You got it. Hi, you're on the air with Larry. Larry, this is old enough. Aha, lady of mystery. Well, what's on your mind, old enough? Well, it's not on my mind. It's on my guy's mind a lot. Stay tuned, sports fans. This could be big stuff. <laughs> Larry, I need advice. I really like him, but he keeps wanting to... Well, you know... Well, honey, most guys want to you know. But if you don't know whether you want to you know with this guy, then don't, you know? That's no help. Larry, he's terrific. I don't want to lose him. Sex it up. <laughs> um, well, I mean, you know, as they say in the uh, Grand Prix of Romance, uh, lady, start your engine. Do you really mean that? Sure, let your heart be your guide. Uh, you're right. Thank you, Daddy. I mean, Larry, bye. Daddy. Daddy, oh, God. We'll be sued by her parents. I am her parents. We've got dead air. We need some music quick. Strangers in the night. Where's Diane? Oh, hi, Dad. What are you doing home? Never mind. Is that guy here? Not so loud. He's hiding in the closet. <laughs> All right, lover boy. Come on out. <laughs> Who is this short person? He lives upstairs. 
I'm babysitting while his mom's at the store. We're playing hide and seek. Want to play? Hide and seek? No. No, thank you. <laughs> Probably your mom will be home by now. I'll walk you up. You know, he sure is easy to babysit. You know, he's been hiding in that closet for one hour. <laughs> Ruthie, where is Diane? She went down the drugstore to buy some root beer flavored lip gloss. I think they're gonna neck. <laughs> oh, Lord, I hope that's all. Is Hank here yet? Daddy! I want to talk to you, young lady, about this hot to trot kid. Don't say anything juicy until I get back. What's hot to trot? What's juicy? <laughs> oh, Diane, Hank phoned. He said he'd be a little late. He's working on his van. He's got a van? Yeah, he calls it his Rassel Castle. <laughs> His rassle castle. Daddy! Listen, you're not going out with that kid in any four-wheel mattress. You're not going out with that kid, period. So you can just, uh, you can just take off the root beer flavored jeans and the tight lip gloss. I mean, the, the, the tight lips and the root beer, you know what I mean. You told me to start my engine. I didn't know it was you. I don't want to go anyway. Then why did you call me? Because I do want to go. Well, I'm glad you cleared that up. <laughs> Life isn't fair. Why does a 16-year-old boy have to have sex? Well, who said they did? A 16-year-old boy. <laughs> okay, it was Hank. Of course. The sensuous salmon. <laughs> oh, come on, Daddy. When you were 16, didn't you have those urges? Or whatever you called them in the old days. <laughs> Absolutely not. Bring me up to date. What'd you say? You gonna let her go for it? <laughs> Where do you hear stuff like that? On your show. Oh. Look, Diane, what's the rush? You just got off a skateboard. Uh, Daddy, I don't want to do anything, but Hank's not just some kid. He and I, well, don't laugh. I love him. Love? I thought you guys were going to talk about sex. I went to my room to watch the baseball game. What a stupid age. <laughs> Honey, if Hank really loved you, uh, he'd respect you. I know. I know, that was a little corny. Okay, when I was 16, I did have the same feelings as Hank. A boy will say anything to get what he wants. Honey, I remember this cheerleader, Splits Johnson. I almost had her convinced that if she didn't, you know, I'd get pimples. I think I'd better call Mom. I told your mother I'd get warts. You and Mom? No, no, no. Look, every kid feels he's got to try. But if a girl flat out shoots him down with a big no, it's not the end of the world. It's awful. <laughs> but it's not the end of the world. I really should call mom. Look, honey, for the time being, I am both the mother and the father to you. Now, as the father, I say that you should forget about Hank. And as the mother, I happen to agree with the father. Look, if, if, if he really has any feelings for you at all, and you say no, he'll respect you. Are you sure? If you believe in yourself. Really? Really. Oh, Daddy, you make a pretty good mom. <laughs> I was just scared. I ought to have more confidence in myself. That's a girl. There's Hank. I gotta get my stuff. You're going? Well, you said if I had confidence. You are not going. Daddy! Beat it, hot pants. <laughs> I didn't think you cared. <laughs> don't worry, Morgan. He won't get warts. Warts? What do you want, Morgan? Morgan, don't you think a woman should be in charge of her own body? Yes, of course I do. Larry, you have to work tonight. Tonight? Chef Pierre filled in for you. He cooked crepes all afternoon. He's all crept out. 
all crept out? Does a woman have equal rights or doesn't she? Diane. Of course she does. Morgan. Did you let any guys make out with you when you were my age? Oh, well, of course she didn't. No, wait, let me think. <laughs> Did you just say no? But, Daddy, I love him. Diane. Daddy, on an infield fly, can you advance a base? Bless you. Women are supposed to be free, and I can't even go out on a date. Don't you trust your own daughter? Morgan, will you keep your big nose out of this? Of course I trust my own daughter. Oh, thanks, Daddy. I love you. There's Hank. Bye, Daddy. Thanks, Morgan. Diane, wait. Diane, boy, you're a big help. <laughs> is everything okay? No. I know how you feel. Being a father is hell. Earl, you have kids? No, my father always said that. <laughs> car wouldn't start. I had to get a sitter for Ruthie. I don't know where Diane is. Larry, Diane's a good kid. She'll be okay. Ten seconds. Doesn't anybody understand that my daughter is out with some depraved, degenerate sex fiend? Is he in the union? <laughs> Thanks. Both of you. Just wait till you two have kids. Me and him? How? <laughs> Diane's a very adult young lady. She'll be okay. Trust her. You're on the air, line three. Hello, Larry. I trust her. What I don't trust is Hot Hank and his mobile house of joy. House of joy? Yeah. Larry? Yes. Oh, boy, we're back on the air with... I didn't know we were on the air lair. Larry, this is Mildred. I want to tell you about the tramp next door. Uh -huh. She never pulls down the shade. She just parades around in her pantyhose. Oh. All my husband does is come home with a six-pack and sit in front of the window. Uh, well, Mildred, I tell you, if I were you, I'd just uh, pop into my pantyhose and uh, have a parade. Well, last time he was interested in my pantyhose, he wanted to strain paint. <laughs> Sound like a very colorful woman. Goodbye, Mildred. Station ID. Larry, everything's gonna be okay. Did you get the address of the lady with the pantyhose? <laughs> I got two rooms to paint. Line two. Hi, you're on the air with Lair. Larry, this is old enough. Diane? I mean, old enough? Well, uh, where? Well, how are things going? Larry, remember I called you this afternoon? Oh, I'll never forget. Uh, are there any developments with this uh, Casanova you were telling me about? You mean the octopus? The octopus? <laughs> oh, that dirty little son of a... Uh, maybe you better tell your poor, loving, concerned father where you are. I'm at the emergency hospital. At the hospital? Are you all right? I'm fine. It's not me. It's Hank. I bit his hand and slammed the door on his foot. Oh, thank God. That's when he fell off the bridge into the river. Larry, can I ask you something? Anything, honey. Anything. How does a girl tell her dad she loves him for caring about her? He knows old enough. He knows. Tomorrow afternoon, see number one Notre Dame take on Maryland at a national telecast that's part of an exciting college basketball lineup on NBC. Later, watch The Sentinel, a tale of unspeakable fear and supernatural horror. See The Sentinel after Chips tomorrow night. Stay tuned now for the thrilling premiere of Sweepstakes and the stories of the winners and the losers of a million-dollar lottery next on NBC.